الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام والله عز وجل open the doors of knowledge and wisdom for us have mercy on us o oh, the one who is the most honorable the most gracious بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله صلوا عليه واله چمک تجھ سے پاتے ہیں سب پانے والے میرا دل بھی چمکا دے چمکانے والے تو زندہ ہے واللہ تو زندہ ہے واللہ میرے چشم عالم سے چھپ جانے والے برستا نہیں دیکھ کر ابر رحمت بدوں پہ بھی برسا دے برسانے والے all praises is due to almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our sustainer our provider our cherisher and nourisher the master of the day of judgment the owner initiator and creator of everything that exists abundance of peace blessings and choices limitations be upon the prophet of rahma the intercessor of the ummah the owner of jannah the most exalted and celebrated prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sahib at-taj wal mi'raj wal buraq wal alam dafi' al bala' wal wabaa' wal qahd wal marad wal alam arwahuna fida sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam may our souls be sacrificed at his blessed feet May peace and blessings be upon his illustrious family and noble companions Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in Welcome back to another episode of the series called The Early Echo Thumma alhamdulillah indeed All praises is due to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him for all the blessings which he has bestowed upon us Through the blessings of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Inshallah azza wa jal in today's episode We shall be discussing the blessings of brotherhood in Islam What is the power of unity Ittihad It is a program once again not to be missed Kindly share this video for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Watch this program from the beginning right to the end as well Let us begin inshallah as per routine with the blessings of reciting the Rudi Pak as we yes, of course dedicate a segment which is only for the recitation of the Rudi and salutations and salawat upon the noble Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We present to you another hadith our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us such an amazing uh, news and glad tidings in regards to the greetings of Muslims. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever two Muslims meet and greet one another for the sake and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whilst doing so they recite durood upon me they send salams upon me Allahu Akbar before they depart from each another before they leave one another Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall pardon and forgive all the past and the future sins Subhanallah Subhanallah Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, what a great blessing this is. Just imagine that your sins shall be forgiven simply for meeting your brother for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whilst doing so, you recite durood and you send salutations and salams upon Rasulullah Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, the poet says so beautifully, सकरम मुझ पे काश हो जाए हुजूर ऐसा करम मुझ 
मुझ पे काश हो जाए हुजूर साप करम मुझ पे काश हो जाए मेरा वजी फादुरु दो सलाम हो जाए मेरा वजी फादुरु दो सलाम हो जाए सल्लु अल हबीब सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि मुहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम एंड नाउ my favorite segments come into place whereas we will be listening to inati rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam composed and written by none other than imam al kalam kalam al imam al shah maulana mufti ahmad rida khan rahmatullahi taala ali rukh din hai ya mahr e sama aur aap pyara kalam hai ise sunte hain inshaallah azza wajal aur is kalam ke baad hum dobara is program ke sath hazir honge kindly stay locked to madani channel sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم يا مصطفى يا مجتبى خير الورى صلى على صلى على صلى على صلى على صلى على صلى صلي على 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 ركن هيا مهر समारुख दिन है या मेरे समा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं शब जुल्फ या मूछ के खुता शब जुल्फ या मूछ के खुता ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं सर्वे जा फिजा कुमरी ने सर्वे जा फिजा है रत ने झुंझला कर कहा है रत ने झुंझला कर कहा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं किस जोर पर खुर्शीद था किस जोर पर क्या बड़े के चमका था कमर क्या बड़े के चमका था कमर बेपर तब वो रुख हुआ बेपर तब वो रुख हुआ ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं सजा डर था कि इस यहाँ की सजा 
अब हो गया रोजे जजा अब हो गया रोजे जजा दी उनकी रहमत ने सदा दी उनकी रहमत ने सदा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं तक सोना तुझे शब सुबह तक सोना तुझे शर में नबी खोफे खुदा शर में नबी खोफे खुदा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं हक ये के वासिफ है तेरा हक ये के वासिफ है तेरा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं रुख दिन है या मेरे समा ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं शब जुल्फ या मूछ के खुता शब जुल्फ या मूछ के खुता ये भी नहीं वो भी नहीं came even the brightness of the sun had left as well as the beauty and the glitter and shine of the moon could not bring any difference subhanallah this reminds me of a beautiful hadith of sayyidina jabir bin thamura radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu ye farmate hain ki i was once with the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i was comparing the moon to the beauty of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam such as i was looking at his blessed face and sometimes at the moon sometimes as his blessed face and the other time at the moon and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that night used a uh, a beautiful dress beautiful kameez and kurta mubarak that had red stripes and it was the the moon which was uh, on the 14th night and it was in its full beauty Allahu Akbar when the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me oh Jabir what are you looking at I then said ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I am comparing the moon to your beauty and I have come to this conclusion that ya Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam your chehra e mubarak is much more beautiful than even the moon Allahu Akbar the of you as in the Somadini channel this was the nuraniyat and the glow and the shine of his blessed face dear viewers and listeners of the channel that even when he would walk into a dark room the darkness of that room 
would be removed through the revulsion face of Rasul Pak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidi Allah Hazrat says, Khurshid tha kis zor par kya bar ke chamka tha qamar be parda jab wo rukh hua ye bhi nahi. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us the true ishq, muhabba and love, connection and devotion to Madinatul Munawwara. Ameen, thumma ameen, thumma ameen. Dear viewers and listeners of Madini channel, as I mentioned earlier that in today's program we are going to be discussing brotherhood in Islam and remember when the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made hijrah from Makkah to Mukarrama to Madinatul Munawwara. Sahaba Ikram who left everything behind that migrated with the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal due to the devotion and love of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they sacrifices are beyond estimation leaving behind family leaving behind businesses leaving behind the homeland when they came in Madinatul Munawwara they felt very lonely and feeling the pain of leaving everything behind. It is your homeland where you were born and brought up. You did business, you got married, you had children, you had everything. Their gardens, their fields, their businesses, every single thing they left behind. And they traveled and accompanied the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to spread Islam, in order to take the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the four corners of this earth. Nonetheless, when they done this, there is also no doubt that the Ansari companions welcomed the Muhajir companions wholeheartedly and they brought happiness to them, subhanallah. So there was a little need since the Muhajir companions felt very lonely. They felt as if they had no support. Though the Ansari companions done everything that they could do to provide happiness, but the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seen something is missing. And these Muhajir companions are missing their homelands, they are missing their hometown, they are missing, uh, oh, they have left everything behind and they need more support. So therefore the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to establish the relationship of brotherhood between the Ansar and the Muhajireen. So that the loneliness of the Muhajireen and their sense of a lack of support could be removed instantly. And becoming each other's helpers, the issue of this Muhajireen's livelihood would also continue. In other words, they would do business. They would have some sort of establishment in the city as well. Because remember, Madinatul Munawwara was a foreign land to them. Unke paas kya tha? Jab yahan se nikle, sab ko chhod, chhod kar ke aap wahan hijrat ki hai. Huzuri Paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke liye aur unke saath bhi tashif le gai. So remember well, dear viewers, they went into a foreign land where there was nothing for them. So therefore, when the Holy Prophet ﷺ decided to establish this relationship of brotherhood, he had chosen the house of Hazrat Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Therefore, Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa then called one Ansar Sahabi, one Ansari, and one Muhajir companion. And he said, as of today, you both are brothers in the real sense. Allahu Akbar. Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa declared and established this type of brotherhood. Ki even today too, history is buckled. Historians are buckled and they are amazed at such an amazing, phenomenal and outstanding brotherhood and unity. Though they were, they had no blood relations. They were brothers in Islam and the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala united their hearts. And when he established this type of brotherhood, in the true sense, the Ansar took the Muhajir to his home and he placed everything he had in front of him. The one who migrated from Makkah al Mukarramah and said, As of today, whatever you see here, Jo Kuch bhi here, half of it is mine and half of it is yours. Allahu Akbar. So much of sincerity. In fact, seeing this type of sincerity and khulus, Hadrat Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Rabi Ansari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he had taken Abdurrahman bin Auf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with him. Or Jab, Hadrat Sayyidina Abdurrahman bin Auf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ni ye mulahiza farmaya ki ye inka khulus hai, his taqwa, his piety, his love. And whatever the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, this companion, this Ansari companion, Hadrat Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Rabi has 
in its real form performed it and done it itne khush hue ye ki he made dua abdul rahman bin auf made dua for this companion saad bin rabi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that allah azza wa jalla grant barakat and blessings in your business in all your wealth and having said this he said please show me the way to the marketplace i want to go to the marketplace nonetheless saad bin rabi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu taken abdul rahman bin auf with him to the marketplace and when he went there to a famous market known as qainuqa in madinatul munawwara to aap waha jab tashreef le gaye to wahan se apne ghee mangwaya he bought and purchased ghee jo khane mein dalte hain aur ghee ke baghair maza bhi nahi aata hai allah aur many of us enjoy our food mainly with ghee as well it's used for food he purchased ghee and and cheese and he began to sell this this is the business abdul rahman bin auf radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu began and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided such amazing amounts of barakah and blessings in this business of this companion that within few days within you know short span of time subhanallah he had made so much of money that subhanallah he decided to then get married and after he got married when he presented himself in the court of rasul pak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam because now he's married he's running his own home He went to the holy court of Rasul Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet of Allah azza wa jalla asked him how much of dowry have you given in Sahih al Bukhari he says ya rasul Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gold equivalent to 5 dirhams Rasul Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so happy to hear this and he said to him that yes Abdul Rahman bin Auf mashallah now that you should have a walima even if it is one goat that you feed people This hadith is also found in Sahih al-Bukhari. It has been mentioned in many other books of narrations that Abdul Rahman bin Auf radiyallahu ta'ala anhu had so much of barakah and blessings in his business that when his merchandise would enter Madinatul Munawwara, his goods would be loaded on 700 camels. Allahu Akbar. And the people in the city of Madinatul Munawwara would be overjoyed when they would know that the camels or when the goods of Abdul Rahman bin Auf have arrived. So this is the baraka and the blessings of establishing brotherhood and unity. Ki no one have ever seen such unity before the viewers and the Somadini channel. Other companions chai chota business ho ya bada business ho. This is the sunnah of Rasul Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The sunnah of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radhiyallahu anhu. The sunnah of Ali Sayyidina Umar Farooq radhiyallahu anhu. Uthman Ghani and Mawla Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajhuhu al-kareem. It has been mentioned that uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala who began the business of trading in clothes whereas Hazrat Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala who began to trade in uh, other businesses and he also opened a business Uthman Ghani radiyallahu anhu used to trade in dates likewise big business or small business they all became independent once the ansaris had favored and opened the doors of opportunities through the blessings of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wasallam they weren't misers and they uh, never became selfish but rather they had selflessness within them that they preferred their own happiness for the muslim fellow brothers as rasul pak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam had established and formed this type of unity and brotherhood in the true and real sense imagine they had divided their wealth into half and said as of today whatever i possess half of it belongs to you allah akbar what a great help this may have been for those companions who left everything behind and in this way subhanallah they were no more dependent on others since they were always eating of those things uh, that they would earn themselves in makkatul mukarrama and now when they came into madinatul munawwara and after this incident which taken place in the house of hazrat sayyidina anas bin malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu those companions became independent subhanallah and they also began to do business so from here we learn the real teachings of islam this is what islam is all about subhanallah about brotherhood about unity about muhabba about love about caring for others as well and rasul pak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam had done this great favor upon the muslims dear viewers and the sumadini channel that even it has been mentioned in the glorious quran e pak let's listen to what allah azza wa jalla says in the holy quran e pak in regards to this type of brotherhood that was displayed for love harmony and peace affection and unity between the muhajirin and ansar 
in the divine court, this type of love was accepted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who believed and migrated and fought in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who gave shelter and provided help, it is they who are the true believers, for them is pardon and an honorable sustenance. In Siratul Jinan, the commentary of the Holy Quran, Allahu Akbar, this was explained that the Iman and the faith of both the Ansar as well as the Muhajireen had been attested. So what was attested here? And those who believed and migrated and fought in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who gave shelter and provided help. This was a great test of their faith and iman. Of how they do establish relations between each another. And in Siratul al Jinan it is mentioned. The purpose of this verse is to mention the greatness and the excellence of the Muhajireen and the Ansar. As we all heard that the Muhajireen left everything behind. And how the Ansar had offered and given shelter to those people who sacrificed everything. Allahu Akbar. So this was such a great act and such a great action by the Ansar that was accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore the glad tidings and the khush khabri was, Lahum maghfiratu wa rizqun kareem, that Allah Azza wa Jal has pardoned them. Their sins are forgiven. And they have an honorable sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rosy, the provisions which is provided by Allah azza wa So, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, brotherhood is such a beautiful action. It is such a beautiful and amazing uh, quality of a person who invites others. He may not have any blood relations with you, but for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you establish this it brings about peace and harmony in our society because remember rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not only establish brotherhood between ansar and muhajir as the poet says so beautifully in regards to this brotherhood he says bhai bhai muhajiro ansar bhai 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 Ansar Dil Milana Mere Huzur Kahe Dil Milana Mere Huzur Kahe Ha Dil Milana Mere Huzur Kahe Allahu Akbar rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought about such amazing unity that never was seen in the history of the Arabs. Since it was in their nature to fight, it was in their nature to take revenge from people. To this extent, ki, leave alone the Muhajireen and Ansar, even those tribes that had all enmity, all grudges, jo purani dushmani thi, according to tafsir siratul jinan, Aus and Khazaraj, ये दो ऐसे कबीले हैं जिनकी लड़ाइयां ना 120 साल तक जारी रही for 120 years they continued fighting it was like bloodshed they would be bloodshed almost every day and until the last war taken place between them called the battle of buas that was a huge battle between the aus and khazraj all the main and prominent um, chiefs and leaders of both tribes had died in this battle all grudges that was taken from generation to generation, generation to generation for over 120 years. Suli Pak sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam brought about such unity and such blessings, Allahu Akbar, that these people had forgotten about their old grudges. They have left the enmity. They were thirsty for blood of each another. But after the unity of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, they had pardoned each another. This is the teachings of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is the training of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Islam. This is the message of Allah Azza wa Jal and His Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. Therefore Allah Azza wa Jal says in the glorious Quran Pak. And remember Allah Azza wa Jal's favor upon you.
There was enmity between you. He brought your hearts together in love. So due to his grace, you became brothers with one another. Allah is saying, due to this grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you became brothers to one another. Now, the same thing is mentioned in Siratul Jinan, that Allah Azza wa is reminding the people of his favors. Out of many blessings and favors, he says, remember this one favor that he has done. Out of many other favors, that he has united your hearts. He has brought your hearts together. That you may be a muhajir, a migrant companion. You have come from another city. You have come to the lands of Madinat al Munawwara. Oh, you have old grudges. Grudges that you were bloodthirsty for one another. For 120 years, these grudges had continued and was parted from generation to generation. But the teachings of Islam is that once the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam had established unity, harmony and brotherhood, these people had forgotten about their grudges and they united with one another as if nothing had happened. Who can bring about such unity, dear viewers and listeners of the channel? Subhanallah, this is Islam. And if we follow the teachings of Islam, if we follow the sunnah and the tariqah and the footsteps of the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam, our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa salam, or the sahaba kiram, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi wa ajma'in, then compare ourselves to the companions of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we say, if this is the case that we follow the footsteps of the noble personalities, then we should be staying in the boundaries of Sharia. How did the Sahaba Ikram spread throughout the world? How did they spread Islam? How did they spread the message of Allah Azza wa Jalla and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It all begins with the unity, dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel. If today we are united, then why can we not see with our brothers eye to eye? If today we are united, why can't we sit on one table and have a proper meal together? Today, if we are united, why one brother hasn't called his other brother for over several weeks and months and years? Parents have disowned their children. Children have not spoken to their parents. There are such different types of conflicts and arguments and such sort of problems in our societies that, Wallah, we are still bloodthirsty. We are happy to see that my brother has gone to jail. He's imprisoned. My brother is going through some difficulty. We are cursing one another. We are fighting with each another. What type of unity and what type of obedience is this to Allah Azza wa Jal and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which is hadith al-Qudsi, I love those who meet each another for my sake. I love those who love one another for my sake. I love those who spend on each another for my sake. And I love those who help each another for my sake. Allahu Akbar, meeting each another, hmm? loving each another, spending on each another, and meeting each another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something which is most Beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Musnad Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, this narration has been narrated. Dear viewers on the Samadhi channel, do we do things to show people or do we do it for the pleasure and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even if it is you giving anybody any sort of help. You are paying some child's school fees, you are buying for them some groceries, you are helping them with the rental, you are helping them with this and that. Are you doing it? to show others or are we doing this for the sake and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as the Ansaris who welcome the Muhajir not to show others but rather for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their excellence has been mentioned in the Holy Quran in Pak. another hadith of Rasul Pak is the most beloved action to Allah Azza wa after the Fara'id is to bring joy to a Muslim's heart so if you're reading your five daily salahs, mashallah, alhamdulillah, and the most favorite act after this obligatory act is to bring about happiness and joy into the heart of a Muslim fellow brother. Khushi baate, khushi aande, khud bhi khush rahe, dushmani ko chode, Allahu Akbar. This is the teachings of Islam and this is brotherhood in Islam, dear viewers. There are many more other examples and ahadith, but inshallah, Zawajal, we would now listen to a Madani Gulista, inshallah. Zawajal, iske baad hum dobar is program ke saath hazir honge. Please do not leave as we are going to be discussing more about unity and ittihad, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ala muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar, Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma has reported that the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam established brotherhood among his blessed companions. Mawla Ali 
Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajahu Al-Kareem came with tears rolling down his eyes and said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam, you have established brotherhood amongst the companions, but you do not make me a brother of anyone. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam replied, you are my brother in the world and in the hereafter. Subhanallah. With regards to the above mentioned hadith, the renowned commentator of the glorious Quran, Hakim al Ummah, Shaykh Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan, Ali Rahmatullah al Hannan, has explained You are my paternal cousin in relations, and I have made you my brother in the pact of brotherhood and made you my brother in the world as well as in the hereafter. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. However, it must be noted that despite the above fact, Mawla Ali, Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem, had never ever called the blessed Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam as his brother. Instead, whenever he radiallahu ta'ala anhu called him, he always called out, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Then how dare lowly persons like us have the right to call the most dignified Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as brother. Sallu al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu al-Habib Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back dear viewers. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Understand well who are your family, who are close to you. After understanding that, inshallah, then learn the rights of each another. What are your hukuk and your rights over your wife and what is her rights over you? Likewise, between parents, between children, between siblings, friends, cousins. After understanding that, it is the rights of even the neighbors that when they are sick, you should go and visit them. It is the rights to help them, to provide, you know, uh, to provide for them to offer provisions to them. If your maternal side or paternal side of the family needs any sort of assistance financially, it is, it is important over you because you've got to be mindful about your blood relations. For example, your aunt or your, um, your auntie or your uncle had asked for any sort of help financially. Since it is your, your father's family, it is your father's brother or sister or your mother's brother or sister, it now becomes important for you to take care of them. And this is to fulfill the right of being in the family. This is the, the right to understand the hukuk and the rights of each another. So in terms of, of being a human being, in this regard that I'm a human and I've got, you know, uh, family members, I've got friends and relatives, understand their hukuk and their rights. And likewise, according to those categories, offer your help and assistance. If they are sick, go and visit them. You know? Offer comfort and condolences to them in the difficult moments to be part and parcel of their happiness as well as their sad and bad times. In this day and age, people are afflicted with different sorts of sicknesses. As we speak to you today, dear viewers and listeners of Madani Channel. But have a look out there. The people are paranoid to this extent that they don't even want to speak to anybody. They don't even want to you know, go and offer the condolences. But yet there are other heroes out there who have no relations with you when you were tested positive, for example. But they would leave everything behind and come and give you oxygen machines. They would come and offer help to you. They would get doctors in touch with you. They are assisting people who have no place even in the hospitals. It is because the teachings of Islam is this, that subhanAllah, they would risk everything they have to make sure that you are fine. And this is the rights of being a human being. This is Muslim and then when it comes to humanity, we offer humanity to even the animals. We, we, I mean, we show humility and humbleness to even the animals. Ki banda should be kind. He should be loving. He should be caring for the right reasons according to Sharia. Allahu Akbar. Some of the rights is this that we should offer condolences. We should be with them in the difficult times. Assist them necessarily. If you have the means to do that, inshallah, help them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you as well. Just as the Ansar assisted and helped the Muhajireen, likewise, inshallah, Zawajal, you will also receive help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, various tribes and nations means different 
social statuses, different background, different race, different color, different appearances. Somebody is black, somebody is white, somebody is this, somebody is that. Why? Why has Allah Azza wa created you in various nations, various tribes and in different forms? With different shapes is so that you may recognize each another. You may understand and recognize one another. And Allah does not judge you by the way you look or by the way you are, but rather He says, Inna akramakum, inna Allahi atqakum. Allah judges you by the taqwa and piety you have in your heart, by how much you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by how pious you are. It is all dependent on your piety. You are judged by the taqwa and piety you possess. It is not appropriate for us to judge anybody. Allah Azza wa ultimately will judge us by the taqwa and piety we have. And this is how we should see others as well. Not what they dress, what they drive, where they live, what they eat, what they drink. You know, a person can be very simple. He can be a beggar on the street, but he could be better than me. He could be better than me in his taqwa and piety because this is what we all need to focus on is how can we increase our taqwa, inshallah. Reconcile for these matters. The first thing that stops a person from reconciliation is basically ego. This idea is actually not a good idea. You should be the first one and you should be the one who breaks the ice in this regard. If there is no communication between sisters and brothers, friends, relatives, for whatever little quarrel and minor issues, you know, which is, even if it's major, for example, but if you become a person who's forgiving, then remember well, subhanAllah, the power and success lays in jihad and unity is the greatest of power. Look at rope, for example. Uh, this is an example to get some sort of motivation, you know, to reconcile. It's about unity. If brothers aren't talking to each other or likewise close friends and relatives, then remember, examples are given out there. For example, look at rope. Though it's unified with thin strands or threads of cotton, if the thread is single, if it is separated from the rope, then it is so that the child can also break it. The thread, which is so thin, it is so thin that if it is broken, the child can also break it. But when it is broken, thread or dhago ke saath milaya jata hai to kitna mazboot ho jata hai look at the rope that even it can become or serve as an anchor to hold a boat and ship simply because it is now unified and attached to the other threads ye sab kamzor kamzor hai magar jab saath mein mil jate hai to kitna pakka aur mazboot dhaga ho jata hai ki phir usko koi tod nahi sakta dhage se phir rassi kehlata hai it becomes a rope or becomes a huge string a strong string subhanallah likewise look at water take one katra in your hand from the ocean, one drop, one droplet, and place it on your palm. And you ask any sane person to, he will tell you, well, this is a drop of water. But the moment you take the drop of water and you put it back into the ocean, and now you ask, what is this? He will say, it's an ocean. So it is the same thing. Until it was with the ocean, it was the ocean. And when it's separated from the ocean, it becomes a droplet. The wind could blow it, the sun could dry it, you could drink it. <laughs> well, this is ittihad, that when you are together, you form a fist, and when you, are, when you are separated from the power, from the mainstream, you are weakened automatically. Today, this is the reason for our destruction, and this is the reason for us losing this, for losing, you know, losing out in various ways, is because we have left ittihad and unity. Allahu Akbar. Al ittihadu quwwatun azimatun. Ittihad and unity is a very uh, powerful source, it is a very powerful thing. And great thing to be united. And this is my earnest appeal to the viewers out there, inshallah. The hadith of Rasul Pak in Sahih Al Bukhari, volume number four. It is not halal on any person that he leaves his brother for more than three nights. Allah Akbar. Ya to salu ki dushmani hai. Bukhari Shrif ki hadith sunya. Ki teen rate se na guzari ki wapne bai ki saat kalam na karta ho. Such that when they meet, they turn their faces away from one another. The one who is better from them is the one who says salam first. One may say, better shaks ko ne jo pehle salam kare. Huzuri Paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki ye mubarak hadith hai. And another hadith, Rasul Paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, do not turn your backs on one another. 
neither have enmity towards one another, neither have jealousy, neither become the one who cuts ties. O bondsmen of Allah Azza wa become brothers with one another. A Muslim is a brother of a Muslim. He does not oppress him, neither does he deprive him, nor does he disgrace him. And this hadith is found in Sahih al-Muslim. Allahu Akbar. You know, two famous ahadith I have presented to you from Bukhari Sharif and Muslim Sharif, which are so authentic and it should serve as a form of motivation for us that if we are not in talking terms right now, pick up the phone, dial the number and break the eyes. Go and give him a personal visit for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. To it, dear viewers, any sort of discord is there, it's because of shaitan. It is shaitan who does not want you to unite with your partner. He does not want you to unite even though he has done wrong. Forgive him for the pleasure of Allah. Reconcile, come to common terms. You know, fix the matter. But it should not be the case that when you see him three days later or four days later, you do not want to even see his face. They are unable to even make salam to each another. This is a major problem in our society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon us. I was actually going to give you some narrations and some examples in the life of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Give you some more examples of some companions as to how the day deal with this type of thing, you know. Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali used to go and visit a person and that person would come and visit him. It has, said, it has been said that once uh, Allah Hazrat went to visit him and a local person from the area also went to see Allah Hazrat at this man's house. And he was sitting in the corner on a charpai in hayat e Allah Hazrat you will find the story. And that person was a poor man, gharib in Santa. The owner of the house saw him with a very, uh, you know, disgusting sight to say, well, you know, who are you that you came here? Frightened him with the sight that Allah says, I saw that man being embarrassed by the ishara and by the sight of the, the host that hosted me. Nonetheless, that man left, he went away. After some time, that man who I went to visit came to my home. And when he came to my home, the local Baba, Baba Kareem, Bakhsh, he also came and he came to trim the beard of Allah. So when he came to Neaton, the mashallah, the Mubarak beard of Sayyidi Allah rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, which was in according to Sharia. Uh, he asked Allah Hazrat, Hazrat Huzur mein kaha bethu? Sayyidi Allah Hazrat 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 kaha bethu na bas, uske, band, uske bagal mein ja ke bethe. Go and sit next to the brother who has come to visit me. And he was the same man who showed that, you know, the disgustful uh, sight to this person who was embarrassed. He was frightened. So this Baba, Kareem Bakhsh, he went and sat next to the guest that came to see Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. And Allah says that he was so embarrassed, this person was so shocked that he was hissing like a snake. And within few moments, he just ran from there, leaving that man alone with Allah. So Allah says, well, it was his luck and fortune. But this is not the teaching of Islam, not based on your appearance, not based on what you wear and how you dress and who you are and what you are. It is all about your taqwa and piety that you have in your hearts. If we become people like this who are loving and caring, Inshallah Zawajit and support those weak individuals in the family. Do not hold all the money with you. Build something for them. Do something for them. Do not feed them fish, but teach them to fish, inshallah. And this will assist them and you know and assist their generations as well. If you do this for the pleasure of Allah Zawajal, you will definitely see the reward in your grave as well as in the akhirah. We have come to the end of today's program. Until then, stay good, do good, be good, and remember, inshallah, we will be back with another episode. So remember the Madani al-Maqsad of your Dawat Islami and that is I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal, Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Allah, start your day with remembrance of Allah. Start your day with remembrance of